Hey you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Ruby, I live in New York City and this is my lifestyle channel. So if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and take a moment to do so. We're trying to reach 7K, that is the next goal here for this channel. And also be sure to go ahead and follow me on TikTok. I post daily content over there and our next goal is 25,000. It's that time in the YouTube schedule, another month has passed. I seriously cannot believe that we're in April already. I feel like out of all the recent years, 2022 is truly like flying by the fastest. But as always, I'm coming at you guys with every single book that I read in the previous month. So obviously today we're gonna be breaking down every single book that I read during March. We're gonna be doing summaries, mini reviews. You guys know how it goes at this point. Also you guys, this was so random, like not book related at all. I swear we're gonna get into the actual video in a second. But if my hair looks slightly dry or off, I know and I apologize. I took a shower today, washed my hair and I really needed to give my hair a trim just because it has felt too long recently. I just feel like I have way too much hair on my head. And normally, you guys know, I use my Dyson Airwrap to do my hair, which is so much better for my hair. But when I trim it, I like it to be pinned straight so that I can really see where I'm cutting. So I had to straighten my hair today, which I feel like always just kind of dries out my hair. I tried to then do some just like very quick, kind of like loose like waves with my Dyson just to give it a bit of movement. And I used some oil, but I feel like it just still looks dry and kind of off. However, the next time I wash my hair, that will fix itself. But it was a much needed trim. I literally cut off like three or four inches and my hair is still very long. Probably something that you guys wouldn't have even noticed, but I feel like from looking in the viewfinder sometimes, like content creators were always so hypercritical of ourselves and we're like, oh my God, my hair just looks so off. Anyways, let's get into the actual video. I am so excited to break down the books that I read this month because it was actually a bit of a slower month when it came to the books that I was able to get through, but they were all such winners. So. So during the month of March, I actually only read three books. However, two out of the three were a bit more like heftier reads in the sense that they were quite a few pages, quite a few hundred pages actually. I was actually much more busy in March than I intended to be. I thought that April was going to be my busy kind of spring month, but turns out April is going to be a little bit lighter for me work-wise and March was crazy in a good way. However, because of that, it didn't leave a ton of time for reading. But the books that I read, like I said, such a win. So this video might be a little shorter, but I feel like I still have a lot to talk about. Out of the books that I read in March, I read two fictions and then one nonfiction book. So we have a little bit of a variety here. So let's just get into it. As always, I'm gonna be reading the summaries off my phone. So if this is in the camera, just, you know, it's here. Okay, so the first book that I read during the month of March was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was a book that I had been wanting to read for months and I had been on the wait list for it through the Libby library app for quite a while. It was finally my turn to borrow a copy this month. My hopes were very, very high for this book. I've heard a lot of great things about it. So let's get into the summary. This one is pretty long, so I'm probably gonna like kind of paraphrase. Malibu, August 1983. It's the day of Nina's annual end of the summer party and anticipation is at a fever pitch. Everybody wants to be around the famous family. Nina, the talented surfer and supermodel, brothers Jay and Hud, one a champion surfer, the other a renowned photographer, and their adored baby sister Kit. Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the offspring of the legendary singer Mick Reba. By midnight, the party will be completely out of control. By morning, the Reba mansion will have gone up in flames, but before that first spark in the early hours before dawn, the alcohol will flow, the music will play, and the loves and secrets that shape this family's generations will all come rising to the surface. Malibu Rising is a story about one unforgettable night in the life of a family, the night they each have to choose what they will keep from the people who made them and what they will leave behind. I'm just gonna start with this. This book for me gets a five out of five. It's so funny because I feel like typically I'm very critical of books and it takes a lot for me to rate books five out of five, but this year we have just been having so many of them and so many great wins. This book was incredible. So as the summary kind of talked about, it's all about like the culmination of this one night, this one party that somehow ends up in a mansion being set on fire. However, what's really great about the book and what keeps it super interesting is it doesn't just take place on that one night. There's tons of family backstory, there's tons of setup and kind of, you know, looks into each of the characters, how they got to where they are today, their upbringing, kind of taking you through all of their individual stories, how they mesh together. It's really interesting because Taylor Jenkins Reid is an incredibly popular author, right? But I feel like this is one of the 
less popular books from the catalog like reading the reviews after I finished the book it seems like a lot of people really liked this book but not as much as other picks from the author I however thought it was incredible I really love the character of Nina and how she was able to even under the most difficult of circumstances be this incredibly strong backbone for her family and I guess this is a slight spoiler but eventually create a true life of her own that she really craved while there's a little bit of romance in this book it's definitely not the main part of it this book is really about family and what that means to different people and just because somebody is like a blood relative to you that doesn't define them as a member of your family if that makes sense which I think is something that a lot of people have to come to terms with in their lives I would say the first half of the book is definitely a little slower by no means did I think that it was unnecessary or it wasn't interesting but by the second half of the book things start to really pick up the pace quickens a lot in terms of like the writing style I feel like the second half of the book I just zipped through it was wildly entertaining it was heartfelt but there were also moments of like humor in it as well there was also a ton of drama don't get me wrong I feel like this would be a really good summer read if you haven't read it yet I would almost maybe hold off just because one it is based in Malibu there's just things about it to me that I feel like would I don't know just be like a really good beach read or a summer read which is funny because the next book that I read this month probably would be the same thing I guess I just read them early <laughs> I didn't feel like the build-up to the main part of the story was necessarily a disappointment because I don't think the main event of the fire is supposed to be like the point of the book it's really supposed to be about each individual characters journeys and how you know their childhood informed their adulthood and the lives that they're living now you guys know i'm all about you know having the opposite of a disappointing ending at the end of a story especially one that was long like this and pretty dense it took me a while to get through but yeah i felt like the ending wasn't disappointing or anything like that i was pretty satisfied with the way that it ended i thoroughly enjoyed it though is it like a life-changing book no, like I didn't learn things about myself per se, but I really enjoyed it. It was super entertaining. I love the writing style. And I also just liked, I feel like recently I've been reading a lot of like fictional romance books and I just like that this wasn't the main point of the book. Okay, the next book that I read in the month of March is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, who also wrote the book Beach Read, which I have not read yet. I'm still on the waiting list for that. People love this book. So my expectations were really, really high. I feel like everybody who's read this book has loved it. I didn't know anything about this book going into it, other than I did know that it's more of like a romance, you know, fictional book. So a part of me was almost thinking like, what's what's the hype about like what really makes this book different is it geared more towards young adults is it geared more towards people my age not to say that I'm not still a young adult but I'm, I more so mean like a really young adult novel but let's get into the description again I feel like I might have to paraphrase this one as well okay here we go Poppy and Alex Alex and Poppy they have nothing in common she's a wild child he wears khakis she has insatiable wanderlust, he prefers to stay home with a book, and somehow, ever since a fateful car share home from college so many years ago, they are the very best of friends. For most of the year, they live far apart. She's in New York City and he's in their small hometown, but every summer for a decade, they've taken one glorious week of vacation together. Until two years ago when they ruined everything, they haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but she's stuck in a rut. When someone asks when she was last truly happy, she knows without a doubt it was on that ill-fated final trip with Alex. And so, she decides to convince her best friend to take one more vacation together, lay everything out on the table, and make it all right. Miraculously, he agrees. Now she has a week to fix everything, if only she can get around the one big truth that has always stood quietly in the middle of their seemingly perfect relationship. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I hope you guys liked my little reading of that. Okay, this book was so good. Again, dare I say, five out of five from me. Alex and Poppy are officially one of my favorite book couples and like just overall book relationships. I can't really talk about this book without like not discussing spoilers so if you haven't read this book yet I would skip ahead. I love the fact that this book really does kind of show that the best of romantic relationships really do start from beautiful honest friendships. While my boyfriend Kevin and I haven't known each other for a decade our relationship certainly bloomed from a really just honest and genuine friendship and that's 
why I think our relationship works so well is because we started off as friends. This book was definitely a little longer, kind of similar to Malibu Rising. I was actually surprised at how long it was. It did not feel long at all, but because there was quite a hefty page count, I feel like the tension between the two characters is just building so much throughout, especially as you learn like the background between the two characters and their relationship. I just feel like it makes you just want to like root for them even more and you're like, okay, we know, like we get it. You guys really like each other. You're just afraid to say it's like who's gonna make the first move. As far as the setting of the book, I really enjoyed it. Obviously, one of the characters lives in New York City. You guys know I love books based in New York City, but, and maybe it's the fact that I've also been like desperate for an actual vacation. I loved the fact that also the book took place at so many vacation destinations. It was easy, it was enjoyable, and just because it's like easy to read doesn't mean that it wasn't interesting or didn't feel different, because it totally did. I loved everything about this. I thought the writing style was super realistic. It was intense at times, it was humorous at times, everything that the book needed to be. Not to give too many spoilers away again, but I'm hoping that everybody who hasn't read this book has like skipped ahead, but the scene that takes place in the like bar towards the end of the book where Poppy finally admits like her feelings and she's super honest and forthcoming. One of the best book scenes. I like read it twice over just because I felt like that dialogue was just so beautiful and even though it's obviously a fictional book it just felt really real and honest and I just uh, I loved it so 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 much. It's one of those books that after a few months I definitely want to read again which isn't to say that like I want to do that for all five star books that I read. Sometimes I'm satisfied just reading them once, but other times I want to like give it a few months and read it again. So like books, um, I'm trying to think of other ones that I've done that with. I really want to do that with Before We Were Strangers again, and I really want to reread this, maybe during the summertime. Okay, so those were the two fiction books that I read over the month. Now let's get into the one non-fiction read that I was so excited to finally read. I finally purchased You're Not Special by Megan Ray who is one of my favorite content creators, podcasters, YouTubers. That's how she first started. That's how I found her. I'm sure that's how most people found her. To me, she is one of like the OG beauty, fashion, lifestyle content creators. She also has a hilarious podcast, two podcasts actually, both of which I am avid listeners to. She has Don't Blame Me, which is more of like an advice, like call-in podcast, and then But Am I Wrong, which is again, another one where people can write in and it's really about like who is wrong in certain situations. Very, very funny and truthful and not funny at times in like the best way possible. But I believe it was like later last year, she came out with a memoir and I was really interested to read it because I know there are certain things about her life that she's always been very hesitant to touch on, which as somebody myself who's a content creator and I feel like I'm pretty much an open book, there are still things that like would make me uneasy to speak about and I knew that she was gonna be very, very honest and forthcoming in this book. And I also just thought it would be interesting to hear like her perspective on kind of going from zero to 100 and becoming this YouTube content creator in a time where it was still such a new thing. Like the term influencer hadn't even been coined when she started creating content, very similar to myself. I would say the book is half memoir, half life advice. And I really feel like if I was to describe this book in a sentence, it would be a big sister in a book. Megan does a fantastic job at talking about kind of like everything that you really need to know when it comes to growing up. She shares very personal experiences, um, some of which honestly kind of made me laugh out loud, others of which made me really feel for her and applaud her honesty. There's a chapter, kind of what we talked about in Malibu Rising, about kind of your family doesn't necessarily have to be like blood related, you can choose your family. And she has a very honest and open chapter about um, her relationship with her parents. I won't say much more other than that. And that chapter truly just, I like I said, I applaud her bravery and her honesty because I'm sure just that chapter alone will help so many people. There were definitely things that like I felt that I could take away from when reading this book. And again, I was really happy to finally read it and purchase it and support her. What I will say is if you are already in a committed relationship and you're, you know, a few years into your adulthood. I don't know if this book will be as relevant for you. I would say the chapter is about 
dating and kind of navigating dating in your 20s like I'm past that I'm in a committed relationship so I feel like they didn't necessarily apply to me they were interesting to read they were super relatable but I didn't feel like I necessarily like needed to read those chapters if it made any sense or if that makes any sense I feel like I can't talk right now I'm like running out of words but I feel like if you're kind of like just graduating high school maybe you're still in college this would be such a good read because it feels like you really do have a friend slash big sister writing this book for you and honestly like I said having been been such a big fan of both of Megan's podcasts I really didn't expect anything less now here's the thing I loved the writing style of this book I definitely think it was worth the read for me but because not all of it was super relevant I'm going to give this book for me a 3.5 out of 5 the writing style I would give a 5 out of 5 but as far as for a non-fiction book that's supposed to kind of like you know give you advice and be a resource for me not all of the information was super like timely and just relevant for where I am in my life but if you haven't read it yet even if you're not familiar with Megan I would really recommend picking it up because it's so much more than like a book about a youtuber which I think was a lot of people's like common misconception I mean I know Megan for far more than that not personally obviously I'm just a fan of her content but I feel like some people at first probably thought oh it's just gonna be a book about social media it is so much more than that her YouTube journey is a very small part of this book and it's mostly just about growing up making mistakes laughing along the way crying along the way um, and I really did enjoy it but with that you guys wraps up all of the books that I read during the month of March I really hope that you guys did enjoy this video if you did be sure to give it a big thumbs up and again click that subscribe button down below we're trying to reach 7k that is the next goal here for this channel follow me on all of my other social media networks Instagram Twitter TikTok, clubhouse check out my Amazon shop I have a like to know it page there's always so many things you can click in the description box down below I love you all so much I hope that you guys are staying safe happy and healthy and I will talk to you guys again very very soon in my next video okay bye everybody